This is a clip from Basketball at the Bar Live. Let's dive in here. Let's talk about the Portland Trailblazers. The third worst record in the Western Conference last season, 27 wins, 55 losses. The team uh, completely blew it apart there at the trade deadline, getting rid of C.J. McCollum, uh, trading guys to the Clippers for basically nothing. One of my favorite players in Robert Covington was a casualty for them. Uh, according to ESPN, their starting depth chart right now is Lillard, uh, Simons, Hart, Winslow, and Nurkic. That's obviously going to change with a bunch of these guys coming off the books. But I'm just going to break down the salary cap implications real quick, and then we'll talk about what we can do this offseason to help improve this roster. Damian Lillard, first off, the most important player on this squad, has got three more years uh, left on his max deal, so no worries there. Eric Bledsoe is a partially guaranteed $19 million. You have expiring contracts in Joe Ingles, uh, Yusuf Nurkic, Ben McLemore, and uh, a couple other guys, including free agent Yusuf Nurkic. Josh Hart is under contract for uh, two more seasons. One of those is uh, an option, and both of those are partially guaranteed. Justice Winslow's got one more year, and uh, then there's a bunch of rookie guys on this roster. So, Calvin, I want to hear from you. If you're the GM, the new GM of the Portland Trail Blazers, and you potentially have a new owner here coming in pretty soon as well, what's your number one priority this offseason? Well, I look at the Portland Trailblazers a lot differently than I think everybody else does. I, I see the writing on the wall for this team. I don't know how much better they're going to get with Damian Lillard unless they're able to, to pull off some sort of miraculous deal and, and sign uh, Zach Levine and stuff like that in the offseason. They, they still you know, have a slim chance, I think, for doing some of that stuff. But Damian Lillard, he is going to be 32 this year. I'm sure he still has a, a bunch of, you know, at least three or four more really productive seasons in him, in him. But I'm looking at where they're at right now, basically scrapping their entire roster except for him. And I'm thinking, how quickly can we get back to the point where we're even close to sniffing a Western Conference final before Damian Lillard's 36 or 37 years old? Mm -hmm. I don't know how likely that is. So if I was the GM, I'd trade Damian Lillard. I really would. Okay. I would be looking square at a team like Oklahoma City who could potentially <laughs> give me the second overall pick or three future first round picks. Um, I'm looking I, I'm I'm just exploring all my options. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't believe Portland will want to ultimately trade Lillard. So, the flip side of that is how do you get this team back to being a contender quickly? And again, I, this is another name that has just continued to come up. But I'm looking at DeAndre Ayton. Yeah. They are going to lose Nurkic most likely. They could upgrade that position. I think he would fit well with Damian Lillard. They could pay him what he wants to be paid. Zach Levine is another guy that just ke his name keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. But I think it. I don't know it, what's more likely. Uh, if I'm Portland, I'm trying to pair Lillard with a, a really solid interior player a guy that can do it on both ends and that's deandre ayton to me so that's my my biggest focus right now is how to get deandre ayton on the portland trailblazers yeah yeah i agree and I, obviously I've, they need a lot more outside of that i mean i i like josh hart do i think that he's a starter or a, a starter on a playoff team Maybe. It depends on who else is on the roster, but I, I view him more as like a, a role player, a guy that's going to come off the bench and, and be productive for you. Yep. And Anthony Simons, again, is another question mark for me. He had such a great year last year. He's not the best defender. This is a team that definitely needs to be get better uh, defensively, perimeter defense, all that stuff. So they're, they're in a very difficult situation because they have this, this guy who's one of the best players not just point guards but players in the nba they want to win now but they need to add so much in order to get there yeah they really do and i forgot to mention they do have the seventh pick in this year's nba draft but i think you're absolutely right calvin damian lillard is the key to this franchise right and i think you need to call him and say hey dame what do you want to happen do you want to stay here um, because if you want to stay here i'm going to need your help <laughs> building this roster 
maybe I get fined for this, maybe I don't, but I'm calling Damian Lillard. I'm saying, Dame, I need you to call Zach Levine, and I need you to tell Zach Levine to come here to Portland. And I think you, I think you made a great point there with um, bringing in the big man Aiton from Phoenix. If you want a quick rebuild in Portland, you sign Zach Levine and you make a sign and trade for Aiton. And I think that right there, hopefully you don't have to give up the seventh pick because you could probably add some more talent with that. Maybe you do, um, but you're probably going to lose a guy like Afrini Simons in a sign and trade like that, which could potentially work out for Phoenix. They need more guard help, especially when Chris Paul goes down. So maybe a trade like that would work out. But if you had a big three of Lillard, Levine, and Ayton, I think that gives you a great start and get back to the playoffs. And you mentioned three to four years for Dame. Yeah, I see that. Um, luckily, he's a good shooter. We talked about how shooting ages the best. Um, and I could see him being productive until maybe 35, 36 years old, so right around that four- or five-year window. But if you can't do something like that and bring in two more guys to help create a big three, then I think you're right. You do have to move Lillard and start over. Yeah, I mean, they could easily be in the same position as Oklahoma City very quickly if they wanted to, right? Minus like, all the draft picks. Well, no, I mean, they could they could acquire a ton of draft picks. Yeah. From not necessarily just OKC, but another team. I, I see them being able to make a deal similar to the one that Oklahoma City made when they traded Paul George to the Clippers and and got a King's Ransom worth of draft picks in return. That that could be an out for them that would set them up for, for the future. Yeah. I'm also going to throw Bradley Beal in here as well because I, I think a guy like Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard have a ton in common in, in terms of, like, loyalty to their team, and maybe those guys could figure out a way to work it out. Yeah, that, that's the the thing that holds up the idea of trading Lillard, right, is, yeah. like, the fan base is so in love with him, not just because he's a great player, but because he has backed the city of Portland. He's maybe had opportunities to leave the team in the past and has chosen to stay with this team. Um, so it would be an unpopular, I think, decision to make in the short term, but it might be the best move for them in the long term. Yeah. Yeah, this team's really tricky. You know, it, it's teetering on that, like, if they have a great offseason and they're able to pick up another star player or two star players, they could be right back into contention next year. And uh, having a guy like Damian Lillard on your team definitely helps that, right? It does. People will want to come play with him. Yeah. Or they just fall off a cliff yeah. and they rock it to the bottom. Funny, rock it. <laughs> they, they rock it to the bottom of the standings below the Rockets if they do trade a guy like Lillard. Yeah. So we'll see what and happens. The, the free agent class this year is there are some really good, fine players available, but it's not one of the best ones we've seen in recent mm -hmm. memory, you know, in the last four or five years or whatever. So if you lose out on Zach Levine, if he re-signs with Chicago, yep. uh, if you lose out on DeAndre Ayton, all of a sudden your options are really, really limited. I mean, you could maybe hold out for the the chance that James Harden doesn't opt in in don't Philadelphia. Or they, I mean, that that's what I'm saying, though. Like, you, yeah. you don't have uh, – I don't feel very strongly about – this class of free agents outside of like, you know, three or four guys. Yeah. So you better hit on those guys if you're hoping to rebuild around Lillard. Otherwise, y you might have to think about another option. And maybe having a guy like Afrini Simons helps you move on from Lillard because you feel like, oh, maybe I already have this guy's replacement who's nine years younger, doesn't make a ton of money. And if I trade Lillard, I have all the cap space in the world. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of mixed on that teetering point where it's like you keep Lillard, you could have a great offseason, bring in two more guys, make this a very competitive team, or you teeter that other direction where things don't go your way and you're right back at the bottom of the Western Conference standings. I also want to give a shout-out to this Portland team. Uh, what was it, eight consecutive years of making the playoffs? They were the longest mm -hmm. uh, team in the NBA, I think, at that time, which is really incredible. So shout-out to Portland. You guys have a, a really busy off season and a complicated one as well. Any last thoughts on Portland before we move on here? Rip City. Rip City.
If you are a Blazers fan, make sure you hit that like button down below and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Calvin and I will be discussing the Portland Trail Blazers and many other teams this entire offseason, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Also, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any thoughts on what you think the Blazers should do this offseason, let us know down below in the comments. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please don't forget to like this video and hit that subscribe button. You can join us live every single weekday, Monday through Friday.